Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Diane Kern, who is a real estate professional with Keller Williams in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Diane, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mike. I am looking forward to talking with you today. Me too. I always love getting different people's perspectives on certain topics, and especially when it's the same topic like real estate, and everyone has a unique approach because of their experience, their life experience, their professional experience. So I want to dive into um, how you serve your clients, but get us started with what's your um, background, what got you into the real estate business to start with? Uh, That's a great question. Uh, I started as a teacher in my education. Uh, I was, yes, I, so very easy to transfer all that information and uh, everything I learned to real estate. But yes, I was a teacher, I was an elementary teacher for a very long time. And I stopped doing that to become a real estate agent. I always had a passion and always still have a passion for helping people. And when I was teaching as an educator, I taught all levels of learning and adapting the way the subject was taught and meeting everyone's needs to achieve their goals or surpassing their goals. So with real estate, it's very similar that I'm able to do the same thing uh, for my clients. So I started with education and I'm still continuing with education. Yep. So, so because you're a teacher, um, I've got a pop quiz for you and this leads somewhere. So (laughs) would you consider yourself a salesperson? I love that question, too. That's great. Um, I never thought of myself as a salesperson. (laughs) Good. But uh, in in, in that sense. uh, But, yes, when you're in front of a classroom, yes, that was something, whether you're having a bad day or not, you never let them know. Yep. Well, where I was going with that is so many people, like, for instance, real estate, that's you're in the sales industry. You have to sell yourself to get a buyer or a seller to use your services. And then you have to sell at so many stages throughout there. Sell the, the you know, listing agent, sell, the, I mean, all of these aspects. But what I love is when someone like yourself says, you know, I don't consider myself a salesperson. And here's why. You're a teacher. And the, some of the best sales uh, trainers out there will say, don't, don't worry about overcoming objections and closes and selling. Just educate and be the advocate for your client and help them understand the process. Teach them all kinds of things about whatever, the market, and now why should we get a home inspection? What's the, what's the benefit of that? And when you take that teacher approach, which is hardwired into you, you become the best salesman ever because no one feels pushed or sold or you know, uh, um, uh, you know, pushed. I think that's a, a huge aha that when, when I heard that, I knew that that would be a wonderful thing that you bring to your clients. Yes, and I appreciate you saying that because it is something that I lean on heavily because I walk them through the steps and educating them through the process, uh, the entire process. And, you know, um, there's a lot to the real estate process. So I enjoy learning about my clients and I also enjoy educating them every step of the way. So when you work with clients in real estate, there are so many aspects like you know, buying a home, selling a home, buying an investment property. Do you specialize in a certain area of um, real estate, like only buyers or only sellers, that kind of thing? I work with both buyers and sellers. In reality, a seller can be both because they have a house to sell. And then as they're, you know, completing that transaction, they're a buyer, you know, right away. And and they're worried that, you know, my house is going to sell at a certain day and I'm going to find the next place and close on the same time and not be homeless. So that's got to be really like keeping those balls in there juggling. Yes. It's very important to keep that line of communication open along the whole way as well as I'm walking my clients through the process. It is something that when that is a very big concern, how I'm putting my house on the market, and I don't want to be homeless. What are we going to do? Well, I already have three other options for them ready so that they know that this, these are some options they can look at and investigate if this is where they want to go should their home sell 
quickly yep. and they don't they're not in their next home yet. Yep. And then here's a contingency plan to the contingency plan. You know, if this happens, here's what <laughs> we're going to do. And then if that doesn't work, then we're going to have this in place and ready for. So, I mean, that's that's really something that I know that with experience that you bring, you've seen it, done it. And like the old farmers commercial, you know, we, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. And I know that you can bring that <laughs> expertise to your clients. Um, so let's talk about um, if someone is getting ready to sell their home. Um, obviously different parts of the country, the markets are one way or the other. And no matter what part of the country you're in, the market could be hot or not, but it's going to change. So it's always fluctuating. We know that. So let's just kind of look at the general aspect of how should someone get their home ready for the market? Yes. So for getting the home ready, some people think, oh, I have to do so much to my home in which to get it presented and for people to say, yes, I want to buy your home. Sometimes it, little things can make a big difference. And sometimes they're very inexpensive or no cost ways to get the home ready. And one of the basic ways of doing that is to clean your home, have it clean, yeah. have it, you know, spotless when people walk in your home, uh, even from the outside, you know, you want people to say, yes, I want to go into this home and just, doing simple things outside of, you know, weeding and, and mulching or whatever your landscaping needs may be outside and mowing the grass. I mean, these are all very uh, basic things that people do all the time. And it's really very little cost or no cost uh, to the homeowner for selling their home. Yep. Um, as you were mentioning that, it made me think of this. I, I wonder if you have experienced this before. You know, you tell your client, you know, hey, I'm going to come by in a couple of weeks and we're going to kind of get some things set. So, you know, make sure you um, do what you just said. You know, have some curb appeal and mow the grass and have some, you know, outside uh, tightened up and, and, and inside as well. And have you ever walked into a home and they're like, okay, we worked all weekend and look how great this is. And you're going, oh my goodness, this is not clean. This is not. So, and I'm not trying to be um, funny. I'm trying to say that sometimes people's perception of we're ready, it's clean, it's pristine, but sometimes it's not. So what about getting that outside third party opinion, you know, like yourself as a real estate professional to say, hey, look, first of all, what I'm about to say, don't take it to heart. I'm not trying to be mean, but here's what I'm noticing, you know, because sometimes you're too close to the forest to see the trees and maybe they think it's clean, but it's not. So how do you handle something like that to make sure it's in that pristine condition? Well, I, when I, the clients contact me, I ask them, you know, let's set up a time so I can come see your home and let's talk about how to get it ready for the market. And when I go into the home, you know, I will give them tips. And again, yes, it is, it is their home. So sometimes they do take it personally, uh, but I have to remind them, please don't take it personally because now this is really a product that is on the market that we're going to be selling. So we have to remove that personal part of it of feeling like, oh, you don't like the color paint on the wall? That That's yeah. okay. But we want to make it so everyone walking in is going to be, can see themselves in that home. And they don't need to see all the family photos and, and everything that you have made as the seller personalized in your home, which is wonderful because that's what made it your home. But now we have this as a product on the market that needs to be sold to someone else. So what can we do? And then I have them walk me through the house and have them show me, you know, each of the rooms. And as I'm looking in each of the rooms, I'm looking at many different things. I'm looking at, at you know, even the window coverings, how the windows look um, to, you know, are they keeping the beds uh, made in the bedroom? Uh, are the toys cleaned up? Uh, I don't like to have tripping hazards when we have yeah. showing, so that's really important and also for photos. But it's, it's a conversation that I have with the sellers about the person coming in and what they're looking at as opposed to them as the people who live in the home all the time. So it's, it's a conversation that is yeah. had between myself and the sellers. And we, we come to an understanding and, 
And sometimes, yes, I do get surprised when they say, yeah, the house is ready. And I show up and I was like, oh, yep. no, it's not. <laughs> wow, we got some work to do. You know, it really is different than, you know, let me criticize your home decorating skills compared to let's kind of step back and put ourselves in the potential buyer's shoes and put their lens and their glasses on and look at your home through that. Not to criticize, but to say, traditionally, these colors work best for whatever, or these colors are more brighter or, or what, whatever the case is. So talk a little bit about home staging, because a lot of people feel like um, a staged home can help give that first impression and also help the home sell faster or, you know, for more money. Is that something that um, is a benefit? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And there are things that I can bring that I bring to that part where I did get licensed as a stager, uh, but I, or I should say certified as a stager, not licensed. Um, and I can give that input as well, but yes, to stage the home to make it well, whether we bring in a stager, the stager can do, uh, someone else you know, as a professional stager can come in and give a consultation and have to give suggestions as to what to do for the home to have it sell quickly. They can also do the work for the sellers and stage the home and get it ready. Sometimes staging the home is just a matter of taking the existing furniture and rearranging it. Yeah. It's not something that someone's going to say, oh, my gosh, you're taking all my furniture away and we're, we're doing all this. It doesn't have to be a very huge production. Uh, it's even how to fold towels in a closet that people don't even think about yeah. that because when I'm showing a house, I tell my buyers, open the cabinets, open the closets, look to see what you are going to be buying. And so it's important for the sellers to understand that everything does need to look tidy and staged. And a staged home will sell quicker every time uh, yeah, over and, uh, a home that's not ready. And you're so right about the little things, you know, it, because invariably, you know, you'll have, um, you know, someone go through and, and say, wow, the house is spectacular. But the last thing that they remember seeing or the thing that stuck in their mind was the whatever, this little ticky tacky thing. And it's like, you need to go through like first pass and just make sure you're clean and organized and all that. And then now let's go through and stage for these reasons. And then we'll go through and say, okay, if I were to find some, what's the thing I'm, I'm coming through this house to look for something wrong. What can I look for? And, and, and sometimes it's a matter of even, you know, coming back on several days and going, okay, I'm watching for, Oh, I noticed that cobweb. I didn't pick up on that before. So I think those are so important because it's the feeling. And you know what, when people are going around looking at this house and that house, they know they've got a whole list. You want something to be a showstopper for them. You don't want to give them an excuse to go up next. Absolutely. And I don't want to give the, the buyers the reason to say, oh, I'm, I want to, you know, here's the price of the home. I, I see I have to do this and I have to do that. And then start coming down possibly on the price of the home and what yeah. the offer is. I want it to just shine from the beginning and let the offers come in. So let's talk about that. Repairs versus renovations. So in my mind, repairs are, oh, I see this piece of sheetrock, you know, cracked and hanging on or, you know, something wrong. So there's things that should be repaired, but, but what do you advise your clients on re uh, regarding repairs versus renovation? Like, Hey, the kitchen's dated. So should we do a full kitchen renovation because it's going to cost X and it could increase the sale more or the same. I mean, how do you, how do you advise in that respect? Well, you really have to know the market and you really have to know the area where the home is. Uh, that makes a big difference in the answer to that question sometimes. So with, um, in general though, if, let's say the kitchen has, if it's in really bad shape, uh, what, what, what is the expense account that the sellers have in which to make any renovations or repairs? That's what we have to look at too, because it's, uh, it's what the sellers have as a budget, what they're looking to get out of the sale of their home. So that becomes a conversation uh, on that point versus in renovation versus repair. It's usually, if something can be repaired, let's repair it. Um, yeah. It's always cheaper, which to do such. Get it done because it's also going to be quicker and you can get your home on the market. So if it's a repair that can be done versus a renovation, let's do it. Get it on yeah. the market because often, you know, the renovation, you might go way over what you're going to get back. So yes. let's just get it, let's get it repaired if you can, 
fix it up, paint the, you know, paint a room, paint the house, whichever you have to do, um, you know, the interior, whether it's in one room or not, and let's get it done. And this way we can get on the market. And because the goal is to sell the house. If we keep it off the market, we're not selling the house yet. Yeah. And, and I would suspect um, time is a, a, of the essence, not only to get it on the market, but also if you've got a tight turn time with the house you now have to buy and close on and it's you might not have the time to have a crew come in and do this or that so it, it timing is everything not only knowing the market but when can we get it on the market and then how long do i have to do these renovations so i think those are huge things plus you might need to have like a team of experts where maybe you rely on to say hey i've got a contractor um, they're going to come in and we're going to just assess should we redo that bathroom or should we redo that kitchen? It's going to cost what? And then I, in my knowledge, would know, okay, it could increase the price by X. So you're going to, you know, at best recoup the cost. Well, then is it worth it? But if we know that we can spend a dollar and make $4, now we're talking. So I think those are all things that people should be considering. That's That sounds like great advice. Yeah, well, thank you. Yes, and I, I always have a team of professionals that I do work with you know, as far as getting those kind of estimates and so forth. So I can, I can help out in that aspect as well. So neat. We've uh, talked about, you know, cleanliness, curb appeal, keeping things clean, repairs versus renovations. What else uh, should a seller consider when they're, you're working with them on getting their house ready for the market? Well, really it's a lot of communication that has to, uh, be a part of this it's it's teamwork i call it teamwork you know my team when i call it a team it's you know the professionals that i also work with but it's it's with the sellers or my buyers you know it's the this is teamwork we have to have open communication so i know the needs and wants and timelines and expense and what what the expense number is so it's very important to know those kind of things and to be able to move forward with what can uh, a seller do to get that home ready for the market. Sometimes they're like, they will tell me, you know, Diane, I have X amount of dollars and this is what I need to do. So what's going to give the most bang for the buck and get this home sold for you at the yeah. top dollar. And, and, you know, it's, it's really a lot of those things of just, you know, looking at the home and having someone like myself, and I can even bring in another person if they want to look at that, you know, have a stager come in and give opinions as to what could be fixed. You know, um, I noticed that there's, um, you know, scratches over here or or there's something over here. If we could just get it all so it just looks ready to go. Um, It's really just a matter of, you know, sometimes it's really a lot of the simple things that can do the most to sell the home. Yeah. Well, and you bring up a huge point about communication. It's one thing to, I return all phone calls and emails. That's, that's communication 101. But I suspect (laughs) that you even proactively reach out to your clients and give them things that are coming up. Hey, just to let you know, uh, we just did this and this is coming up and we got this handled. So just a quick update. Have a nice day. People appreciate communication, timeliness, yes. And they appreciate like uh, uh, comforting their fears even before they come up. And I think that's something that, you know, the teacher uh, in you would come out and just really smooth out all of that communication. Yes. I I like to be the problem solver before there's a problem. Yep. (laughs) Exactly. Makes it a lot easier. (laughs) Everybody wins. Well, Diane, I think that's so spectacular. I love uh, your approach to business. So if someone listening to this is interested in kind of uh, checking out what you can do for them in the real estate market in Pennsylvania or New Jersey, what is the best way they can reach out and connect with you? Well, they can call me on my cell phone at 609-306-4856. They can email me at Diane Kern at KW.com, D-I-A-N-E-K-E-R-N at KW.com. Um, or they can go to my website and go through there, which is uh, www.DianeKernSellsHomes.com. And they can reach out to me any way that they feel possible, that is comfortable for them. If they want to text me, call me, I prefer having a phone call and meeting them. Uh, but you know, sometimes that doesn't work for everyone. So I, as a teacher, I adapt to whatever the needs yeah. are and I can do yep. that. Awesome. Well, that sounds perfect. Thank you so much for coming on Dynamics. Real pleasure talking with you today. Thank you so much, Mike. I really enjoyed my time.
You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.